I'm just curious about um, Hong Kong. When did when did that kick off for you? And I can't ask too many questions on this subject, uh, given this is a Betfair video, and I'll, I'll poke into uh, PVL's NRL in a second as well. But um, when did you start betting on uh, on Hong Kong racing? We tried uh, we, we tried it around about um, what about five or six years ago with with um, another bloke who um, it just didn't work. Uh, you know, he had different ideas to what we what we had and. Um, and I do, you know, I'm glad we sort of went away from that that sort of area, and we started up our own little thing, and we changed a lot of things quickly. We were able to move more quickly, whereas he wanted to move slowly and change things slowly and work with it. Whereas it was a, it's a dynamic thing. You've got to actually move quickly. You know, you can't, you know, just plot along and see if this works, and then come back. You've got to keep moving, and then once you get a little base to it then you can start working a little bit slower and take your time. But yeah, we, you know, and as an early doors, we really had to learn quickly. You had to learn quick on your feet and try to do it but quickly. And, and what we've done in the last three or four years is we've done that. And, you know, we've, we've set up a nice little base of what we know in Hong Kong. And, and pretty much it's all about, um, you know, thinking more about trainers and, you know, what, what they're, um, setting courses up more or less. It's sort of more yep. back, gone back to the stage where the old time betting plunge type of thing in, in Australia, it's happening over there all the time. Whereas over here, they're always trying and they're trying to do something because it doesn't hurt them by going up in class. You know, over there, over there, it goes up in class, you've got three or four kilos and it's going to hurt you a fair bit. If you go into another class, the it's not that type of horse. So he's got to try to get back into this, the lower class. So, you know, and it's not to say they're dead or they're not trying. It, it's more they're, they're building it. They're, they're, the horse is not ready. They put it in races where the horse is not ready to run that race or, or to run that distance. You know, so whereas over here, it's pointless in doing that. You know, they might do it to a certain degree, but, you know, it's a lot more prevalent over there. Yeah, right. Um, I, I can see that. So just they're, they're running for the fitness and, and with, with a, a particular race in mind and, and your edge and, and something that you've noticed in, in these years that you've been betting is you can see which trainers are using which horse for, for which race potentially in their setup. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to keep on reading into it. And what would you do on this? What would have you done here? And, you know, there was one in Brisbane the other day that a bloke put it in a 900 meter race and, and, you know, the horse went, okay he just came to the line okay but it was nothing out of the box and then he slammed it into a 1350 meter race at Ipswich it has speed he that was like a barrier trial he had it fit for the 1350 went straight to the front yeah. lead and voted away you know so that's an old time way of doing things you know and you know that happens in Hong Kong a lot it doesn't happen so much in Australia these days but um, you know it was just well done it was just beautifully done and um, I, I always find, you know, Hong Kong is, the, the pros and cons are, are that it's consistent. It's, it's the same horses, same tracks. There's, there's great data, but also there's plenty of sharks there. How, how do you navigate those waters? Can't beat the sharks. They're, they're too good. You know they're, 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 you know, they're there because they are good. The only thing is, is that, um, you know, you, they, you know, the corporates over here are betting on it, you know, and pre post and all this stuff. So there's an edge there. But if you think you're going to get a big edge by the time the, you know, the market is just about to jump and you're saying you will get an edge from doing that, give yourself another uppercut. Yeah, you know, because you know, if you think you're smarter than the Jelcos and lots of stuff, um, well, why aren't you, you know, why haven't you got 400 million? <laughs> you know, it, it's just it's just ridiculous what people say. You know, I hear some people what, what they say sometimes, and you just shake your head, sort of thing. They, it's like a big um, ego trip for them, I think. You know, and, and you've yeah. got to keep your ego in. You know, you you got to you're not that good. <laughs> you just got to keep <laughs> checking yourself, checking yourself all the time. Also, yeah. I was, you know, I'm, I'm mentioning Jelko there before. Uh, you know, I. It's a bad thing to say, but I'm, I went, I had lunch with him with a mate of mine not that long ago, and he was sitting there and he said, 
um, he said, I'll toss you for lunch. And I said, no, no. And he got a coin out. And he said, okay, I'll bet you, I'll, I'll give you two to one that you um, for, for lunch. And I'm looking at him saying, there's some, something's going on here. I just can't wait. <laughs> I said, no. Nah. I said, no, nah, no. Nah. And he said, smart. He said, very smart. I said, well, what, what were you doing? He said, well, I was going to. So he, he tossed the coin and he caught it. And he caught it in between his fingers there so that it was on its edge. So he's seen it, heads this side, tails the other. And if I called tails, he slid it the other way and opened it up. You know, and so, you know, it's, but the thing that I learned from that, from Jelko, is that look outside the square and a number of things that he had done that you can't look at it like that's a 50 50 call, you know, on a coin. But it wasn't. <laughs> so you've actually got to find an edge and something out there that, that is different. You know, and, and you've got to try to, um, it's all about these percentages and keeping it on your side. So and, uh, he, had the, he had the beautiful percentage. <laughs> like he could have said, <laughs> edge, I was gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. um. And then what about NRL? Um, you, how, how long have you been betting on, on league and, and how long have you had the service for? Now we've only had a couple of couple of weeks. Um, it's sort of, uh, we, Corey's a, um, he used to, well, I don't know whether he still works with James at Labrooks and everything, but they, you know, they've, they've got a really good database and, and they've, they've been winning at it quite often, you know, over the last, I think it would have been five years, sort of thing they've been winning when they've been betting on it. And I sort of really wanted to delve into that sort of things for MacBet and actually creating a site that actually everyone could go in there and, you know, a one-stop shop and have a look and, you know, just something to get, you know, get people looking at and, and watching it and all that sort of stuff. Like with the punning side of things with me on the football, I, it just, it's, it, I, I find it hard because it's 80 minutes of hell. I went to the football, I went to the Broncos on Friday, on uh, when was it Saturday night after the races. We were sitting there and I think um, Gold Coast went to something like, a, I don't know, 20, was it 22 nil or something like that? 20, 22 nil. So my brother said, I said, they'll, they'll, they'll score some points in the second half. So he said, so he said, I think you can, you can get 20 and a half start the Broncos. So you're really giving away two or one and a half star. And, and it was a dollar fifty three or something like that. And I said, Oh, we're going for dinner after this. I said, put three hundred on it, so we'll win our win dinner. So they scored and they and we said, Oh, why are we putting three hundred? We should have been having a decent it was a CERN. They collapsed. They collapsed and they won by a point. Or, well, I won by half a point or a point. It was like it was like hell the last you know, 10 minutes, I was throwing the ball up and around like this and it was just cruel. And, uh, you know, watching a race, I can handle that, but watching the football for 80 minutes, oh my God. Yeah, I just, yeah. Just, uh, AFL's yeah. even worse. I feel like it's twice as long. The, the racing, you, you're out of your misery or you, you're feeling the ecstasy very quickly. AFL yeah. game, it feels like it takes half your day. It's like a test match. Um, yeah, NRL feels more manageable. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it can be excruciating some of those those line bets in sports, and you're it, it's always a coin toss. It always comes down to the last couple of minutes. So. I'm 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 in I'm in awe of the blokes who do those pricing as far as lines, how close they get. You know, they're one point either way. It's incredible yeah. how good they are. And um, agreed. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I know Corey had one um, um, yesterday that. Was, uh, he said, para, what do you say? I think it was Parramatta by one. You know, they won by one. You know, yeah, was, wow. You know, that's a mir you know, it's a miracle for me that that's yeah, the thing. And another one that. there. Yeah, there's another one there. He said, oh, they, they, they wouldn't score any more than 39 and a half points or something like that. He took 39 and under or whatever it was. And they, and they won by 40. So he was out by half. You know, it, 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 should have, it was just, it's just unbelievable yeah. how close they go. And then it, it sounds like, given your community, you, you've been able to have a, either people work for you or work with you. Has that really helped the, the, the loneliness that can happen with punting and the isolation? Or do you still experience that 
you know, working from home? Uh, that is a that is a problem. Um, you know, like I'm I'm here from probably five on a Saturday. I'm probably down here from about five thirty till six o'clock at night. Pretty much, I might go, I'll go and have some breakfast for about an hour, an hour, a bit over an hour, and then back here. But we're sort of continually talking on Skype, like you know, like we're doing now. My brother and myself and Mitch is there, and there was a few other guys that was with us early in the piece. We we're continually talking like this, but. You know, as far as, you know, when we're booking, you know, you, there was a lot of banter and a lot of, you know, mucking around and, and you, you know, the nicknames that were down there was just incredible. You know, a bloke could come up and one was called the opera singer and, and, you know, in the middle of a crowd, it was packed, middle of a crowd. And then all of a sudden this bloke could just start singing and everyone would just turn around and, and he, you could see, you could see him appear. And you know it's going to happen, and everyone wouldn't know because their first time was there. And then all of a sudden, he starts singing, and then you got the, you know had the tracksuit gang, and, and you know just all these different people that you you would go up and talk to, and you know some would be mad, and some blokes were the smartest bloke in the world. You know, you know just it's, you, what you find in the racing game that I've found, and I was told this when I was young, and it's totally true, is you get the best people and the worst people. So. You know, that's that's the whole situation with the race yeah. game. You've got to try to stay stay <laughs> with the best and uh, keep your horse. What is it I'll saying? Keep your horses in the worst company, yourself and the best. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I, I can't let you go without probing you for, for something in in the good old days. And we talked about a plunge before. Um, is there anything as a bookie or as a punter, anything that you saw? Like obviously Queensland sort of infamous for for some of this sort of behaviour. Is there, is there something that you can share just to let us out a really good story um, of, of something getting just backed off the map and, and lobbed or, or anything like that? Well, I can remember Fine Cotton and Harbour View, uh, Harbour, Harbour Rules, was it Harbour View or Harbour Rules? Harbour Rules, I think it was. Harbour and I was, yeah. I, was on the, I was on the ground for my old man at that stage. And um, uh, Fine Cotton was just, you know, just backed off the map. But... Harbour Rules, there was 10 times more money for Harbour Rules than Fine Cotton. It was just astronomical. And the reason for that was just because they knew if if old person or Fine Cotton won, they were all going to go down to the fence and say, ring him. And, and, if, and, if, and if Harbour Rules absolutely beat it, well, then they didn't have to say anything. So mm -hmm. you know, it was a beautiful little sting what they pulled off and that, uh, you know, you just got to put your hands together and what they did because, you know, how they, you know, it, it, it was just ridiculous and it's terrible how it was, you know, how it happened, but just their thought and how they actually worked out to actually turn it around on the on the ringing. It wasn't, well, they didn't want the ringing to win. They wanted the fair dinkum horse who was the best horse in the race to win. And they were probably getting... You know, at the finish, they're probably getting about four dollars or three eighty about a horse that should have been evens. You know, so it was just incredible how they did it. And I just shake my head at this. I, I, I did hear a story not that long ago that they were talking about a similar type of thing, and I thought well, that's that's exactly what happened. It was just that's the way it was. It was just they they just they just couldn't put enough on it. You know, it was just incredible. Mm. That's my yes. story. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I'll give, you, I'll, give you, I'll give you another story. There was there was a story. Um, oh, we had a we had a horse. We had a horse in it um, with uh, Brian Wakefield, and, and we had a we all big group of mates. We all said, okay, we're going to make a decision. We'll go buy a horse. So we went and bought this horse, and um, we set it up for a win at at, at uh, Ipswich, and we backed it all over Australia, I think we backed it from about, I don't know, five to two into about threes on. And <laughs> and never never featured, never never got sighted, just just didn't pick its feet up. So I said, uh, that's the worst display of all times. So we all just sort of shook our head and just went away. The next, the following week was a two-year-old. The following week it went to Toowoomba in a two-year-old maiden up there and, and, um, and we knew it was in. And at the time, the sky was was um, was cutting in and out more or less because they'd they'd put a couple of races on and then they might switch it over to someone else. 
So we were all, you know, there was about eight of them blokes in there. We were sort of waiting for Sky to switch it over to Toowoomba or whatever it was and, and um, didn't switch it over. And then the minute all these phone calls came in and said, oh, congratulations. And we said, your horse won. They said, well, I'm sitting here waiting for it to, to come up on the screen to watch the bloody thing. And it won. And he said, he said, oh, he said, that's not the worst thing. And he said, I said, what, what? He said, I paid $108. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so hey. I know of, of about four or five of the blokes that were in the horse that was the end they got out of the horse the horse was called Hell for Leather I'll never forget <laughs> it <laughs> she was she was a good mare she actually she actually um, she threw a uh, what's done George out of BC you know out of BC who won a couple of group three races went to Melbourne and won there she, that, that was that was Hell for Leather was a mother so so she was a good horse, but uh, we didn't do much good at it. <laughs> oh no, for real. <laughs> yeah. All right, mate. Um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much uh, for joining me on the hub. People can find, um, yeah, just Google Macbeck. You find everything. You're prevalent on Twitter. You've got um, some terrific winning services um, and a big Betfair advocate, which we appreciate. Um, and yeah, good, good luck for the remainder of 2020. Thank you so much for making time, John.